Welcome to the Student Hub Live orientation event for the School of STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. My name is Karen Foley and I'm a lecturer here at the Open University and I host the Student Hub Live, which is the OU's online live interactive platform. And our whole aim here is to establish academic community. So we've got together and thought about everything that we think you as a new student would like to know. And hopefully there's some continuing students there who can share their advice. But even if you're a brand new student and all of this is terribly unfamiliar right now, I bet there's loads of stuff that you've learned along your life journey, things like time management and multitask and uh, getting what you want ultimately that are going to come in so useful as you embark on this exciting learning journey. So let me explain briefly how these events work. I know we've got some familiar faces who've come to our events before. Welcome, you'll be brilliant at putting everyone at ease and answering their questions and telling them how it all works. But these events pretty much are your space. So it's an opportunity for you to meet other students, meet members of the academic and other teams at the Open University, and most importantly, to meet each other. And to do that, we've got a wonderful chat box that you can talk about pretty much anything you'd like to. You just type in the box and press return. You can put emoji in there as well as best you can um, and you can meet other students and talk about anything you'd like to. We've also got various polls. We've got a map. We'd like to know how you're feeling. With things like the how are you feeling word cloud, there are three boxes in there and you need to put three things in it, otherwise the results won't submit. So if you can only think of one or two, that's fine. Just put a full stop in. And when you've put those in, you'll be able to get a lovely word cloud on your computer at home and see what everyone else has added to. So please do do that. We'd like to know how you're feeling right now, which level you're studying. We'd like to know what you're studying, why you're studying, and also what you're most excited about and what you're most worried about. Now, at any moment in the programme, you can ask a question and we'll put that to our panel here today. And HJ and Gemma are on our hot desk who'll be moderating your chat and dealing with everyone at home. Welcome both. Oh, thank you. We're really excited to get going. Everyone's just starting to chat to us. And with this chat, chat as always, anything goes. We want to hear your thoughts, comments on questions for our fantastic guests or if you just want to chat about what you've had for lunch or a favorite piece of stationery that you have we'd love to hear it as well so this is really your chance to get engaged and every question is a good question we've got loads of people joining us so paul's actually joining us from uganda where it's three o'clock there wow. So we've got some international viewers. <laughs> well, I think it will be the afternoon. We'll have to find out, or maybe the morning. I'm not too good. One but Paul will fill, fill <laughs> us in on that. We've got loads of people uh, studying SM123. Uh, Dominic's studying S uh, one questions in science. Uh, Ron studying S206. And uh, Ron was actually on campus for the Students Association Freshers. And he said he absolutely loved coming down and seeing what happens here on campus. A uh, few people doing computing and design, including Rebecca. So we're all excited, ready to go. And we're ready to get lots of great advice for our module. And welcome, Gemma, from our student support team. Now, you're new to our hot desk as I well. Am. And I bet, like many students at home, this is something new for you. And you might be feeling a bit overwhelmed. How's yeah. everyone out there? Um, I think everyone's um, chatting chatting along, um, just sharing which modules that they're starting on. A few nervous people as well online. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Well, we're hoping to put you at ease and we're hoping that you can meet some other people. What we've got lined up for you today is four key sessions. Now, these are sessions that we think are really, really important for you as STEM students, but we also have other information on the Student Hub Live YouTube channel that may apply to you more broadly. Things like tutorials, um, the virtual learning environment, the library, the career service. So this is really just focusing specifically on one key question, which is what I wish I knew before I started studying. And we're going to take a look at this from four different perspectives. We're going to firstly look at the student support perspective. Then we're going to look at the student perspective, the AL or the tutor perspective, and then of course our OU academic perspective. So that's the people who write a lot of the module materials um, and work here on campus mainly. So we've got those sessions and the first one we've got is with our student support team. I'm joined by um, some lovely guests here. I've got Liz Shakespeare, Aramide, Youssef and Laura Huff. Welcome. It's always nice to see friendly faces because uh, many people think I've joined this online university and now I'm going to have some computer talking to me. But no, you guys are really friendly. So let's, um, let's make a start. We've got some more widgets that we'd like you to vote on. 
how comfortable do you think you'd, you, you'd feel discussing a problem with a student support team? So this is a hypothetical question because you may or may not have done this yet. We'd also like to know, have you ever run into any problems with your maths? Um, if you did have problems with your maths, what would you do? Um, and finally, after the session, um, how likely would you be to contact the student support team if you ran into any difficulties? So only vote on that towards the end. But right, let's start, Liz, with um, planning. So you're an educational advisor. Now, those sort of job titles, I guess, don't really matter to mm -hmm. students. They just call the student support team and speak to one of you lovely people. Mm -hmm. But your role is quite specialised because you help to give advice throughout a student's qualification um, mm -hmm. or their study journey. Now, planning is something that we've been talking about throughout Student Hub Live as being really important. Why is it so important? I think, I think you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of kind of saying, you know, we will speak to students at various points throughout what is basically a journey and that could be, you know, at one point in their module, it could be at a point where an assignment's difficult, or it could be, you know, looking towards the end of when they get in the classification. It, it, you know, there's so many different points they could speak to us. And I think it's really important, especially with some of the more flexible qualifications, especially in STEM world, um, you know, there might be things that you should have done in the lower levels and, you know, to, to kind of make sure you've got the groundwork that you need to go on to the higher level modules. It, it's really important to kind of make sure you know where you're going from the start. I mean, advice that I quite often give is almost if you're on one of the more flexible qualifications or on, on a qualification that maybe does have a few different pathways, it's almost better sometimes to work backwards. So kind of go to your level three modules. Some of them will have prerequisite modules. Some of them might have modules that you need at level two, you know, that will build in that knowledge to build build up what you need. Um, I mean, I think the other thing is, is it's really important getting the modules that are right for you, making sure that you're adequately prepared for them. Um, I mean, I'd say most of the modules in the STEM curriculum will have these really helpful little are you ready for tests. They're like diagnostic tests and they literally do what they say on the tin. So it is, am I ready for this module? You'll come to the end of it and it'll usually give you kind of, it'll ask you questions, give you kind of, mostly they're marked with kind of a green, amber or red, you know, I um, kind of colour at the end to give you an idea. And if there are things that you need to go in and, and kind of almost revise before you start that module, it'll give you a really good pointer, you know, where to find those kind of things. So I think it's just making sure, you know, that you're planning things and, and putting things in the right order and also making sure the study that you've got is fit for the purpose that you want. Because mm -hmm. I think that can be really difficult. Now, who sees the results of those tests? So we don't see them. That is very much kind of private to the student. Um, what we might sometimes do is ask a student to share that with us to give us a more of an idea because obviously when we give advice it's completely bespoke. It's you know one-on-one -on -one speaking to that student and what their circumstances are. So we kind of put the student you know in the right direction of doing the test. Obviously we wouldn't necessarily say we want to see your marked paper and we want to know how well you've done. It's very much just kind of if they want any advice or they want to talk things through after they've done it they're welcome to share it with us. So yeah. Brilliant, excellent. Um, well, uh, Hayley and Cassandra say that their problem is that there's too many modules and they just want to do them all. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so that, that is one problem at the other end of the spectrum. Okay, so we've talked about the importance of looking at some of those diagnostic tests, that they're all sort of for your eyes only and that they give you a good indication. And I guess that's important because if you're going to be sort of embarking on something that's too much, then there are going to be problems there right before the start, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think you know it, it's good to know what you're signing up for um and i think obviously sets that expectation for yourself is is you know what you're what you're kind of you know getting yourself into i mean what i would say is if you start a module and at that point you're kind of having any worries that is literally what we're here for yeah. and i think you know it's our you know daily life of speaking to students who maybe start modules and, and it's never too late to make those kind of changes there's always going to be options if you sign up to something and you think oh gosh, this is kind of, isn't kind of what I thought it was going to be or I'm, I'm actually finding it harder than I thought. Not only is there, you know, support options, which I think, you know, Laura's going to go on to talk about it a bit later, but there's always opportunities to make changes and, you know, your study journey is yours. It's, it's completely personal. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the things that's quite specific to STEM, I know we've got students here who are not from the STEM faculty, but there are certain prerequisites mm -hmm. um, for certain level one and two modules mm -hmm. and certain things that need to be done in a certain order because of the way that the learning is designed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I'd, what I would say is, and I think it, it tends to be with the science and the computing ones, but then maths, to be honest, all of the STEM ones, you're right, I think probably have an element of it. Um, you know, what we don't want is the students on the more flexible qualifications like the open degree or the combined STEM to get to level three and go, I'm really keen on doing this particular module and then 
being blocked from doing it because they've not done the right level two. So that's kind of why I said about working backwards is making sure that you've got the steps you need to, to do to do what you will need to do. And the only reason we have those in place is to stop students signing up for things that aren't they're not prepared for. And obviously no one wants to be studying a module that's well, it's you no know. fun, is it, going no. a bit beyond? It's like trying to run too fast, mm -hmm. and it's only going to just result mm -hmm. in an infinite amount of pain. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes, I guess, you might advise students to take a step back, and sometimes at level one, that might be considering whether access is the best option. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that sometimes students will really, really benefit from an access module. And, and I think they'll always benefit yeah. from an access module, but not everyone has time for one, do they? Not everyone has time for one, and they are not compulsory. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, all of our modules are open access, and obviously some of them have prerequisites but the majority you can just sign up from level one everything you need is included that I'd say where the access ones come in really helpful is maybe if you're kind of out of practice studying you know or maybe you don't have the confidence a little bit rusty on the study skills I, I think that every student I spoke to who's done an access module they've got something out of it mm -hmm. whether that is again just that little bit of extra confidence or just a bit of extra practice really Brilliant. Now, another thing that uh, I know you'd like to recommend students do is take a look at the assessment strategy. Yes. So this is, I guess, how the components of the module come together mm -hmm. in terms of what the examinable components are, or maybe there isn't an exam, mm -hmm. um, and also the percentage of marks that are weighted for each mm -hmm. TMA, tutor marked assignment. And I think that's really important because I think one thing that we've seen in the past is, you know, if a student does one module, they then make assumptions that every module that they do following that is going to be the same. It's going to be the same mark scheme. Now, as you can imagine, some of the assessment strategies, they might be marked just on the exam. They might be a combination of things. There might be a project to do. And if students know right from the get-go where those kind of important weighted things are, I think it makes them easier to know what their strategy for that module is, you know, on a personal level. Um, and so I would say don't assume that every module you're going to do is going to be the same because they will be different and, you know, it, it's good to know, I suppose, where those weighted assignments are that are going to be, you know, worth more weight. Brilliant. Well, we asked people how comfortable they think they'd feel discussing a problem with their student support team. 59% said comfortable. Yay. So that's great. That's great Only 3% said uncomfortable and 38% said unsure. But I hope you're putting people yeah. at ease. Mm -hmm. HJ and Gemma, how's everyone at home? We're doing well. We've got um, a lot of chat. Um, a lot of people are agreeing that maths can be a bit hard. I find maths hard myself. Uh, Beverly agrees. But Beverly's got a good determined mindset. Uh, she wants to learn more and she wants to get through her maths box to do better. Um, Ruth says as well, maths have definitely been the most time consuming and challenging for me, but I've surprised myself that I can get it, which is great and really positive to hear. Um, Wanda does say that uh, her desk is fabulously tidy, so shame my mind isn't the same <laughs> way, which I know exactly. But unfortunately, both my mind and my desk are not very organised. Gemma will attest to that, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, haley has got a great question uh, that our guests may be able to help us with, is how we can put some keywords into your own words, such as the definition of atoms, which is universal. Oh, that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> no if you want to bank that, I can ask someone else. <laughs> I mean, I think that's something that a lot of STEM students struggle with is putting things in your own words when it is something like science because there's not always a way, another way of describing it. Mm. I mean, what I would say is there's a lot of help about things like plagiarism, um, you know, about how to avoid it. And I think, again, with science it is harder because there's only so many ways you can say something sometimes without it changing the meaning. So, but yeah, on this, I would say have a look on the, um, the student homepage, have a look on the help centre. There's loads of sections on plagiarism and just practice. Mm. Mm. On the upside, there's very few essays to write on math, so uh, every true. cloud has mm. a silver line. And I think it's an important thing, and, and your tutor will really help with that as mm. well, won't yeah. they? Yeah. It's important to think about what you're being assessed on and then how you mm. want to phrase particular things mm. considering the learning outcomes. Um, We've asked people about running into maths problems. Mm. Okay, so this is the next area I'd like to talk to you about, um, Arimidi, because... Uh, 30% said always, 67% said every now and then, and only 3% said that they've never run into any maths problems. <laughs> and then we asked, if they did have problems, what would they do? Um, and the winning result here, would you like to take a guess? It's between Google it or speak to the tutor. Google it. Yeah, OK. <laughs> they do. 57% say they Google it. Then 40% say that they speak to their tutor. Only 3% said that they speak to their student support team about it. So you must hardly get any questions. That's quite funny because I think... Um, 
often when a lot of students do contact the um, student supports in regarding um, any sort of queries they have, sometimes, a lot of times it is actually maths related, um, but um, we are aware that there's a larger population of students who perhaps aren't coming to the student support team mm. because they're not entirely sure what we can do mm. um, or what support is available to them from us regarding their math skills. But yeah, but it's definitely good that they are speaking to their tutors about yeah. it as well, yeah. Brilliant. So what sort of support do students can they get in terms of support for their maths? Okay, so um, a lot of what I'm going to say is going to follow up from what Liz has just said in, regard into, in regards to planning. Um, you don't necessarily you know, need to do a maths qualification for you to, for you to um, need maths. So a lot of the STEM subjects and STEM qualifications do actually require, do have an element of maths. So if um, um, like let's say we have the diagnostic quizzes so we still recommend to every student if you're doing a STEM, um, a STEM subject that does involve elements of maths which all of them do try doing the are you ready quizzes and then that will give you a good idea of where your maths levels are so if let's say for example the a more introductory module MU123 if let's say you found that a bit more challenging let's say when you do the quiz you got maybe red or amber results then we can definitely just take a step back perhaps start with an access module. And if, let's say, that's not something that you want to do or you can't link it to your qualification, we do have maths help um, website as well. We have OpenLearn where you can look at different uh, maths topics and just practice and build up your skills that way. I did some of those maths help resources. I really like them because mm -hmm. sometimes I think it's really handy to go through things because even if you um, are not studying maths, for mm -hmm. example, you might need maths. Like we, we often use percentages, for example, and mm -hmm. um, we'll use conversions or ratios and things that are mathematical ideas. But in psychology, you know, we often use those. So sometimes you think you're not studying maths, but in actual fact you are, and it can feel a bit unnerving. Mm -hmm. So those maths help resources are great. Well, I'm glad you found them helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely that's something that we do tell students that they're these resources are available to you but if let's say for instance you are in a qualification or a module and you're struggling with your math skills let your tutor know yeah. they can refer to your students to your student support team there are individual support sessions yeah. that we can put in place for you in terms of support um, Laura will definitely speak about those a lot more but um, in term don't kind of feel afraid to approach your student support team. there are definitely things that we can put in place for you and don't ever feel you know, students aren't alone in you know finding maths a bit difficult that is one of those subjects that once you do it at school and you don't do it for a long period of time but when you come to higher education it's something that's quite necessary for a lot of your modules so don't ever feel like you know you are the only student who's struggling with that because it is something that we see across the board. So I've met a lot of students in the last few days who really like maths mm. um, and, uh, and a lot of people who really like getting it you know it can feel very <laughs> satisfying as well. So Laura you're a senior advisor what do you wish people knew about the support that's available that they might not already know? Um, I guess that's a big question. Um, I guess the best thing that the students can do is just pick up the phone and give us a ring. Um, sometimes if they are having a difficult time with their studies, it may be that there are some options there for them that they didn't know that was available, um, whether that's taking a study break if, you know, if it's appropriate and, you know, being able to bank those assignment scores, it's sometimes a possibility. Um, so, yeah, I guess what I wish they knew is just that we, you know, we are here to help. Do get in touch. Um, you know, we have special training that we go through, you know, speaking to students in all kinds of situations. Um, and I guess it just goes back to the fact that they're not alone in anything, whether it's their maths difficulties or any life difficulties, um, you know, career changes. We can, you know, refer or we can help, hopefully, somehow, some way. Brilliant. Now, one thing that you do, in addition to lending an ear and being there to support students working yeah. through things, is with resources. Mm -hmm. And those could be particularly helpful if people maybe have um, uh, seen or unseen disabilities. Yes. Um, yeah, so that is something that does come up quite frequently um, when we are speaking to students. It may be that they haven't actually disclosed a disability that they have. Um, I think sometimes there may be a problem with the word disability. Students may not think that they do. Um, so I guess it's just in our conversations we have with them, like you said, referring them to those resources, um, you know, on the help centre, you can look on disability support, um, you know, there's resources like studying and staying mentally healthy, um, and basically there's just a disability support form to fill in if they feel that there could be any adjustments made, just so we can really ensure that that support is in place for them, um, and then their tutor knows and then the student support team is aware as well. 
Brilliant. You can also help with things, um, you've mentioned some of the things like um, a sort of banking certain things, but people can defer or refer, can't they? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think deferral, I guess a lot of conversations we do have is around deferral. Sometimes the student may be they know that they cannot continue with that module. You know, there might be a lot of reasons why. Um, and deferral's been yeah. hold, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. deferral is, we, I mean, think sometimes we like to stay, we like to say, you know, taking a steady break, it's yeah. a bit nicer to sort of discuss it in that way. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of our students are studying amongst other responsibilities and it's understandable, you know, life can get in the way and it's nothing to be ashamed of at all. Brilliant. You can also help with exam arrangements um, and that's really important for example yes. if people have a disability or condition mm -hmm. that may require a home examination or some additional support in that exam. Yes, no that's absolutely right. So when students fill in that disability support form on that form it's um, there's an area where they can mention any arrangements they would like to have for an exam whether that's a home exam like you said um, and the team will get in touch with them um, to ensure that those arrangements are in place so you know, an exam I don't think is a nice experience for anyone, but if you've got those requirements, you need something, then hopefully we can get that set up. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that you do is you know a lot of the other contacts and resources at the university. You've mentioned a few of them, but you can put people in touch through referrals to like the career service mm -hmm. um, and various sort of other places, the DST, qualifications, etc. So if people call you then and you don't know the answer to something or somebody more specialist is mm -hmm. more appropriate to cover that, you just put them in touch with them or, or get that information for them, don't you? Yeah, exactly. So if a student, if we're speaking to a student and, you know, maybe we can deal with one of the queries they have, it may be that sometimes we, you know, we say we're going to get back to you later, maybe we, yeah, consult with another team, maybe we ask the other team to get in touch with them. Either way, the query will get resolved um, and, yeah, we are quite aware of whether it's, like you said, the qualifications, if they wanted to claim like a, a milestone qualification or if they want to speak to a careers advisor, you know, we're aware of where to refer them. If we don't know the answer, then someone else does, basically. Brilliant. And in addition to having all this incoming um, stuff, mm -hmm. you also do proactive phone calls. Now, if I had a, an email, if, especially if I was maybe feeling a bit behind or like that I wasn't doing so well and I had the OU phoning me, I'd think I was in heaps of trouble. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would. Um, but uh, you guys actually phone people up and see how they're doing. And there are times of the year, maybe if someone hasn't submitted something or there's a particular time that you know from previous experience can be challenging for students, you'll get on the phone and you get in touch with people yeah absolutely so myself and Aramade are in the yeah proactive student support team in Manchester so our role does focus primarily on proactively contacting students um, yeah so we we do sort of appreciate that we are calling them it may not be the right time to call yeah. but we do usually send an email to say that that you know expect a call from us um, but we do have some really you know really positive calls we're helping those students again maybe there's options they didn't know or just putting them in the right place um, so I think it's yeah it's a really great form of support that they've got there with that. Fantastic. Now we've got some various resources, some that we've spoken about, the maths help, the maths choices um, and of course access to open learn um, but HJ and Gemma how's everyone at home? We're doing really well. We're chatting about how good open learners, aren't we? Uh, yeah, lots of people have come across the materials online. It gives you a bit of a taster of modules that you could be studying. Mm. And I like what Joy said. I did a free access course last year, which helped me with my maths a lot. And I'm confident for the degree now, which is great to hear. And uh, Joanne says there's so many modules I want to study. It's like a sweet shop. So uh, perhaps the student support team can help us in choosing our modules as well. That's best for us. They absolutely can. So that's great. All right. Never too early to start thinking about that. And of course, as an OU student, you've got access to the Careers Advisory and Employability Service, who can give you great information as well about how your qualification might um, offer more potential for your future career ambitions. So I'm going to end with our poll. Um, earlier on, we said, how likely are you to speak to the student support team? Right now, 74% say that they're likely to speak to the student support team. So that has increased. Um, so I'm very pleased about that. So you've done your job and you can go Hooray. home now or you can go and take more calls from students. And, and if you'd like to call the student support team about any of those options, um, they're on the end of the phone. What times of day are you guys open? We are open... I think eight till eight weekdays, nine till five Saturdays. Yes. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And there's also an email option, isn't there? Yes, mm -hmm. although we've all got different ones, so probably best to go on Student Home and find your student, the yeah. Yeah, your student support team, team and find us that way. 
Brilliant. Okay, well, that's wonderful to know. Well, thank you all mu so much for joining me today thank and showing you. the friendly face of the student support team. And we're now going to show you a video uh, about the student support team, and then we will be back um, to look at the student perspective. So I'll see you very soon.